Hey, how you doing today? Welcome. Welcome to uh, High Desert Bible. Uh, we do a, a midweek po uh, podcast uh, with the intention of uh, presenting uh, the gospel to a dying world, really. And so we're, we're hoping and happy, hoping that you do turn in, happy that you did turn in. And uh, if you like it, subscribe, uh, help us out, and pass it along to somebody that may uh, need to hear what it but it, what we're saying here, okay? Well, listen, today we're going to turn our attention to uh, something that seems to be uh, a, a form of a plague, if you were going to say that. And um, predominantly, it, it can affect anybody, okay? And, and, but, but a lot of times, it would go after uh, single people, okay? And so the topic of discussion today is... Um, Loneliness, loneliness. Uh, do you find yourself uh, being extremely busy, but internally still lonely? And so, if we were going to define what loneliness is, how would we? What would we do? How would we begin? Now, we'll set aside Christendom for a second to the side, and we'll just address the issue of being a a non-believer in the world today uh, that has to find things uh, to fill themselves up with in order not to, uh, so to speak, find themselves isolated, uh, find themselves withdrawing. Uh, that's a form of loneliness. Um, as I said, you, you can be in a crowd and be lonely, uh, or, or you can be amongst people that you know and be lonely, uh, and is it a choice? Is loneliness a choice? Is it a, is it a choice to um, only be around uh, certain people that you know for a fact that it's going to stimulate, you'll laugh or you'll cry or you'll engage in conversation or uh, you'll have an opportunity to meet people, etc.? Is that going to negate the loneliness? And, and what brings about loneliness? What, what, what is it exactly? Now, I'm not discounting what loneliness is. Um, I have found my own self in my life at times, uh, having had uh, quite a few kids and, and been, you know, have a wife and have been married happily for a long time. But there are times internally when I, I require a solitude. Uh, I require uh, uh, going into a, a place that, for me, as a, as a Christian man, it's, it's good because I know that I'm never alone. Um, I, I have God the Father with me all the time and the Holy Spirit in me and uh, Christ ever present because he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So that's the positive concept of the Christian equation, as I alluded to a minute ago. But I want to set that still to the side for a minute. So how do you go about taking care of being lonely? What do you do? Maybe you go to a bar. Uh, maybe you, I'm not suggesting that you, you drink yourself into oblivion, but maybe uh, that's what you do. You go to a bar setting or you go to a cocktail lounge like into the old days. Uh, maybe it's a piano bar. Maybe it's a, uh, a form of a dance place uh, where you can go and be around people. Does that appease? Does that take care of? Does that fulfill uh, the requirements? Does it, does it make you more whole or does it keep you empty um, and so then what is it about loneliness uh, it, does it come down to uh, a, a lack of purpose uh, does it come down to loss I think some of those things are real I think uh, people have had great loss in their life and they willingly choose not to engage anymore uh, because of just the hurt of loss while there's other people that process loss and realize it's part of life, that means death, or breakups and abandonments and things of that nature. Uh, and it's not always uh, the person that's the point of it uh, or the blunt of it that's responsible. Maybe the other person just wants a sense of freedom from responsibility and uh, the consequences of actions. I mean, there's all kinds of answers here, right? And I, I'm not claiming to know them all. Uh, I've known guys that love to ski and go out back skiing. 
Uh, I know guys that love motorcycles and can get lost in that. Uh, I myself could get lost in fishing at times. Uh, it's just me and the fishing pole. So there's no accountability. There's no responsibility as an individual sometimes when you stand in that position. But most of the time, uh, leastwise when people have told me, loneliness is that internal uh, emotion that, that lacks a value or that lacks a worth or, or is afraid to put themselves out there for fear of uh, rejection or being made fun of or... or, or uh, being uh, looked upon as something other than, than who they are. And then, of, co of course, you have today, you have people, well, it's like Halloween every single day out there, isn't it? People are dressing however they want to dress and becoming whatever they think they want to become. Are they trying to fulfill the need of, of acceptance and or attention? Is, is loneliness a lack of attention? Is loneliness... Uh, uh, characteristic of how maybe a person was raised. Uh, I know fellows that were good friends of mine that when they were young, they just didn't like to be around people and they would go and, you know, look out at the playground or look at the fence when they were younger and, and those guys would become uh, guys that participate in sports, but it was individual sports rather than team sports. And then in their occupations or careers, they would choose things like into either plumbers, mechanics, tradesmen, things of that nature that they only had to rely upon themselves. So one thing that happens when we isolate is fear of failures. Um, we don't like confrontations or we don't like the fears of failures and we don't like necessarily how people are going to look at us and judge us and so therefore it's just simpler to be by yourself. Okay? If it was that, that, if it was that easy then there would be nothing wrong. But sadly then some people use uh, substances to curtail the feelings of being by themselves. Now, if you like being by yourself, that's one thing. Then I guess you wouldn't say that you were lonely. You may say I'm lonely at times, but I fill my time with things and I keep my mind occupied. Maybe it's the ones that have an empty mind that don't think about things or find enjoyment in things. See, I, I think if you find enjoyment in things, uh, a hobby, for example, or alike, or if you're a photographer, or if you are a, a person that builds things or fixes things, or see, you're, you're always occupying yourself, but that's not going to fill the void inside. <clears throat> and that's really the essence of what we want to talk about. Uh, that if you, are, if it's true, and I believe it is true, because Genesis 1 tells me it's true, that God, the living God, created mankind uh, in the likeness of himself. And it seems that the word, the Bible, tells us that God created us uh, with a free will. He gave you a great gift. He gave me a great gift, and that is choice. So you can choose uh, to seek after God. You can choose to fulfill and fill the desire and the need inside for God and for God to have his desire fulfilled in you. That's why he created you. That's why he would say in his word that with an everlasting love that he loves you, that he cares about you. He understands you. He knows why you are the way you are. And so if you go your whole life empty, so to speak, without attempting to fulfill your need, inner need, or just fill the void within your life, right? Now I want you to examine it. Is there a void in your heart? Is there a void in your life? Did you have the greatest and, and it's gone? Did you have something so there's no comparables? Uh, or, uh, you know, you, you use comparisons and that makes you decide that you're not willing to pursue anymore? Can I tell you that your fulfillment can be found in Jesus Christ? See, Jesus Christ came and was tempted in all things. He endured all things. He, he had every emotion that we have. That doesn't mean that he fulfilled those emotions. It doesn't mean that he acted upon the, the temptations of his heart and head. Luke 4 says that he was tempted beyond reason, so to speak. He was tempted by Satan himself 
to make a rock to bread that he might eat. He was tempted of Satan to fall down and worship that he might be, have all the kingdoms of the earth and the earthly plane. He was tempted even to take his own life as he was lured to the top of a pinnacle and told to jump. And then the devil even quoted scriptures. And so you see, Jesus responded in a way that's wise for each and every one of us, that man doesn't live by bread alone, that all things belong to the Lord, and it's the word of God that sustains and fulfills a person's life. That's what fills the void, because the word of God, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word of God, and the word of God was with God, and the word became God in the flesh. You see? So God's love uh, did what it had to do to make love available to each and every soul. And by considering the love of God for your life, it's going to demand of you to consider the void that may be within you that you have filled with many other things other than the Lordship of Jesus Christ or God. Okay? Now, there's a lot of people, and you know, in the world today that will tell you they are religious, that they have filled their life up with God. And God is how they determine God is. It's by their own definition. So whether that's a, a stone carved into an image that sits there and does absolutely nothing, or it's a, a graven images of, of things made of wood covered in gold, or, or if it's icons and pictures and relics and, and things of old that people touched, used, etc., have they made those things God unto themselves? And does that fulfill them? And does that make them full and whole as a person, requiring nothing? Does that fill the void? Some people turn to materialism, you know. Some people turn to uh, um, emotional fixes. Some people turn to uh, movies and pornography and anything likened to the same to fulfill a deep desire in their hearts. And, and can we say then that that desire uh, within the human being, the flesh, is always going to be tempted by the devil? It's always going to be the devil's playground, the flesh, and the way you think of things outside of God? and what you see, and how you fulfill it, and how you pursue it, and how you pursue pleasure? Does pleasure make a person less uh, lonely or empty? Does, a, does, does, does a lust make a person less lonely? Or does it make a person lonelier? I, I've spoken with several people in my life that at young ages have done just about everything that you could do to your body or to your life in this life, and yet they're still empty. There's no fulfillment in that. So loneliness is a, is a spiritual condition in, in my way of looking at it. It feels sorry for itself. The, the soul begins to feel sorry for itself, and it elevates a, this issue of, of, of self to the point where self needs to be stimulated and taken care of. God's equation is that, yes, man is flesh, but man also is spirit. And the spiritual condition of man is broken. And the spiritual condition of man is bound to slavery. And the spiritual condition of man is dead to God because God is spirit, John chapter 4, 23 and 24. And so therefore Jesus comes along and he says, there's a day coming when true worshipers are going to worship God in what? In spirit and in truth. And so then now you see maybe why uh, a Christian life is no longer uh, empty in the void. The, the practicing Christian, the, the practicing Christ life means that you're pursuing God through the word, that you're pursuing God and getting to know him through the Holy Spirit that he's put within you and upon you. And he promises in John 14 that he's never going to take him away and he's never going to leave you. He's going to be with you forever. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter if you wake up one day and you say, ah, I just don't feel like this or that. It goes beyond the feeling because it's a fact. Why? Because God can't lie. God keeps his promises. It's very critical to understand that the word of God 
is an eternal word. It doesn't get broken. Now, conversely, there's a devil that roams the earth trying to get mankind to stay in bondage and stay in fear and stay in fear of death. Because they're bound. They're captured him by Satan to do his will. Whereas God comes and says, I've sent Jesus Christ to come and set the captive free. Free from what? Free from the bondages of being empty and, and, and continuously trying to fill a void with anything other than the only one that can fill the void, Jesus Christ. How does he do that? Because Jesus Christ, it says in the word in the book of Hebrews, that he was tempted in all things, but without sin. So if he's tempted in all things, he gets me. He understands. He's been tempted in those things, yet he did not sin. He did not fall to it. He overcame. So therefore, he knows how to fill the void within with what it requires to be filled with. And what is it? Himself. Himself. Revelation 3 says, Behold, and I like using this scripture for this application, contrary to what people may say. Jesus in Revelation 3 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's, it's a figurative sense that he's standing at the spirit of your life and he's knocking. He's, he's wanting to come in. He's wanting to be intimate. He's wanting intimacy in the sense of knowledge. Intimacy in the sense of knowing. Intimacy in the sense of knowing God's plan for your life, that he can fulfill it in you through his life. So he stands at the door and he knocks and he knocks and he knocks and he knocks. But it's interesting, there's only one handle on the door. He's not going to twist the handle and push his way through. He's not going to barge in. Each individual has to open the door of their will, the free will in their life and the choice that they have. They have to be willing to open the door and realize there's something greater than themselves. That Christ came and died on a cross for their life. That he shed his blood for their life. He purchased their life through his blood. And he puts grace on your life today and my life. So that he waits for us to come to a place of recognizing our sins before God. And repenting of them. Not feeling bad. But, but repenting. Turning 180 degrees. And walking away from those. Allowing Christ to make me a new creation. And to change the way I think. Romans 12 says that's exactly what I have to do. I have to present my body as a living and holy sacrifice unto God. And I have to change the way I think about things. I no longer think the way I used to think with a dead spirit. I think now with the mind of Christ, with the living spirit that lives within me, that allows me to pursue God and to find God. And lo and behold, isn't it interesting that Jesus was the one that told us that if we've seen him in his day, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now you say, well, how does that work for us today? Well, the best disclosure of Jesus Christ is, in fact, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Each of them consider the life of Jesus from their intellect and their background and they recorded as the Holy Spirit breathed upon them the circumstances that Jesus walked through and lived through for your life and my life so that we might have a comparison. We would have a life to compare to. And then you begin to realize that he's the most gentle and compassionate and kind to those that were most impoverished and in need. He wasn't always that way with the religious of the day. Matter of fact, he probably had a disdain to how they acted towards people. They were using religion to gain over people, and that's not what Jesus Christ was all about. He introduces us to a relationship with God that gives us all the benefits required to live this life in fullness, in abundance. You know, when you're abundant and filled with the Lord's Spirit, if you choose to go on a walk and think about Him in your thoughts, that's simply fine. That's a form of just getting beside yourself with the Lord and allowing Him to press His sweet little voice on your heart, knowing that you're never alone again internally, ever. 
For Jesus himself said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you, for where I am, there you might be also. I'll come and gather you to myself. It's really emphatic that we understand that loneliness has more to do with uh, a devil's playground than it does with the Lord Jesus. From a healthy perspective, mankind wasn't designed to go it alone. He was given a help meet to help meet his needs. And when we get older and we may lose our help meets or our helpers, we then turn to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and he becomes our help meet our needs so that really we are never are alone. So I hope today I've stimulated your brain a little bit to consider that you don't have to be where you're at today unless you want to be. And if that's where you want to be, that's fine. But if you're empty and void in spirit, then in my heart to you, it's not okay. I can love you where you're at, but when you die, you'll be accountable to the Lordship of, of God Almighty because you rejected, you weren't willing to allow Jesus Christ to fill the very void that's in your life. See, before you exit this earth, you really need to consider having your name placed in the book of life. Because Jesus promises if you overcome this world, these temptations, the flesh and the devil, if you overcome by faith in Jesus Christ, he says in Revelation that he will not erase your name from the book of life. He will not take it away. So it boils down to being around Jesus Christ internally that loves you, accepts you, and will never, ever leave you alone again, ever. Or walking through life on your own, thinking that you have to be alone. That's a deception. You don't have to be. It's a choice you're making. And I hope that you would choose Christ. And I hope that you would consider Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice opens the door, I will come in. I will come in and sup. I will come in and get to know him. I will be intimate. We will break bread. It's opening of my heart. It's laying down the right to myself. It's believing that he loves me more than I love myself. It's the act of a free will of opening and choosing by choice to open the door and invite Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and you alone. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and that you would come freely into my life. Change the way I think. Make me born again by faith. And I believe you can because you said you would. John 3.3. 3. And Acts 4.12 says there's only one name by which man can be saved. It's Jesus Christ, the name. So thank you. Thank you for listening in today. I pray that you would get, leave a comment uh, if you request some prayer or need some answers to anything, please feel free to leave some comments down there. I, I look at them. I, I try to investigate the comments that are presented, if and when they are, and I'll be glad to get back with you. Gracious Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to share, Lord. We just love you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Ask that you might show yourself to any and all who desire to know you and that they might open their hearts to receive you the way that your word says that they can. For God so loved the world that whosoever would believe should not perish but have everlasting life. The idea is to believe on the lordship of Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross for your life and then inviting him in to save your soul. God bless you guys. See you next time.